Father, we thank you for this afternoon. We thank you. Because every woman in this ground has purpose. Every man here has purpose. Every individual who has come for this conference had to come. Even for those yet unborn, God, that the election might stand not of works, but according to him that call it. We thank you that even our children in our loins receive of this, that our generations to come shall share in this glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed and believed. Somebody say, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Um, as I was meditating on what to share today, a uh, lot of things kept on crossing my head to and fro. And the Spirit of the Lord started to minister to me about the balances that are necessary in the things of 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 ministry pertaining women and the understanding and the world of women praise the lord jesus christ we have observed a number of things in the gospel and i believe now i speak from an apostolic authority now i'm not just speaking as a teacher of the word but from an, from an apostolic authority i have seen a very indifferent balance of the things pertaining women in ministry and the devil has deliberately done it because he knows that if the balance is brought families will be restored and when families are restored the church is built praise the lord there is no unit in this world right now that is under attack like family. It's not there. Every force in this world is attacking this one thing called family. It's attacking relationships. It's attacking this balance. Brant by the grace of God to open your eyes to something very key because this will position you in a very, very, very strategic place as a future minister of the gospel. And I believe that every one of you should be in the knowledge that... When the Bible says that he gave some apostles, pastors, prophets, teachers, evangelists, all of these are for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry to the edification of the body. Are we together? There is no impression of the Holy Spirit that does not seek you to be perfected for the work of ministry. You might not be on a pulpit woman, but you will be a minister of the gospel. Wherever you are, somebody say amen. You might not be on radio, you might not be on television, you might be on television, you might be on radio, you might be on a poster, you might sit as an administrator, wherever you are, there's going to be a mandate on your life, and that mandate will produce fruit, and God will qualify you fully as a minister of the gospel. And I believe that all these conferences that we take time to preach into, they are not just there to liberate you to fight, they are there to liberate you to become the perfect minister, that God has called you to be. Somebody say, Amen. I'll give you an example of these extremes. Um, back in those days, the olden culture, okay, it's even in scripture, there was a certain thing, many people, well, women were not understood a certain way. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? If you wanted to define a woman, you were defining something that is like property, a chattel, right? You own it. When it goes around, you have to send a chaperone with it. Somebody look after it to make sure that it is, it is, is, is in the right place and doing the right thing. You understand? And um, of course, their say was not honored, was not respected. Women are actually not only the Christian faith in many diverse things. For those of you who have had access to access the hadith, women are dogs in there. They're treated like dogs. You understand? They are not honored and respected. Even in the olden culture. You see? Sometimes it's not even the religion. It's the culture. Jewish culture back in the day. It never used to honor women. As it should have. You understand? It's as though the woman during that time did not have anything to say or they didn't have an opinion to be. Some of you read stories like, uh, like uh, let me give you an example, like uh, David killed Uriah, 
and took Bathsheba. Do you think he cared for her heart whether she was in love with him or not? She just saw a beautiful woman and he killed her husband. You understand? But can you ever imagine a dialogue that Bathsheba has in the evening with her mother and she has to explain that I was out bathing and the king saw me. He got this property, used it. My husband has been killed and I'm supposed to love this child. I don't know if I'm making sense. Are you seeing the reality of what I'm talking about? I'm just supposed to wake up and act like everything is okay and make him babies. And we just move on like nothing ever happened. Because I think during that time they didn't think that they also have hearts too. Do you understand? And culture, during that time, because of the honor to the king, it was mandated for her to force that love into her heart. And the next thing you know, somebody is forcing themselves to what? To love. Even many women don't even have the right to love, even in the African cultures today. Your parents would just wake up back in those days and tell you, hey, we just saw a chap for you. You don't even know whether the guy has a bad breath or what. You just have to get married. No matter the truth. That's the truth. You just wake up, you don't even know how he thinks, you don't know whether he likes bathing, you just don't care. They just tell you that's the guy for you. And you cannot what? Refuse. They take little ki kids, 12 years, 15 years, like lambs going to slaughter. And they go crying. Not because they were going to miss their family, but because they are going beyond their what? Their intention. Up to today in 2016, we still have women who are marrying or being married off without their own personal consent. And it's still happening up to now. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's a group of people like that. There's a group of people like that. And of course you have the outer circle, which is quickly quick to judge. Eh? Eh? Because there are some people, of course I know there were women in the neighborhood which were saying, nah, hey, you are mine, mm -mm, let's accept first talk about it. Let's first what? Talk about it. Bathsheba goes bathing. Can you really tell me she just bathed? Do you think she was not calculating? Some me that woman, eh? <laughs> I have my own reservations. I know. You know, until they yeah, you're right. You're right. Yamma, what I was wondering? Because I'm thinking, why did she go that other part? That woman must have had a certain thing. And then she started doing like this. And then the man saw her. You, you even notice very well. The guy is killed immediately. The woman crosses over to the guy's bedroom. For you, can you? Uh -huh. <laughs> and then people start to say, I have reservations. It seems that woman eh, talked to the king to kill the man. Yet about, I know it. Me, I feel it in my heart. Eh? I, I might not have proof, but me, I feel it. That that woman must have had a certain working there to what? To kill that man. Then the in-laws all have issues with who? Bathsheba. You killed my son. Then they walk away. You killed my son. Then they what? They walk away. But she was a victim of society. Praise God. And I'm going to show you what the devil was up to. So when that transition hits the world, you realize then even our belief systems were crushed against that. People get scriptures in Isaiah. <laughs> oh, what a foolish people, for they have led women to rule over them. I say, ah, women are not even supposed to be ruling. What are women supposed to be doing? Yeah? Paul says women should not speak. Ah, you see? Don't even tell us about salvation. We're not supposed to be speaking. Okay? Don't even tell us about what? Salvation. You know why I'm saying all this? is because I want to define victory here for you. <laughs> I want to define what? The victory that we're talking about on theme. And so, at the end of the day, that also produced another extreme of what you call the radical feminist movement. But the challenge is that to be a radical feminist, you have to be like a man. You have to be like a man. You look at all of them who are radical. They're not even married. They're not married. They can't. Because they have anger. It, it, it goes generations past. It goes generations past. It goes generations past. You see, one day, if I have time, eh, in one of those women conferences, I want to teach something about 
the power women have eh, to effect generations. Some of you take it lightly, eh? but God never spoke to a man that thou shall have nations. No, the nations were to women. In the two nations wage war. In the two nations fight. Men were when it, when seed comes out of him and enters her womb, he becomes a nation. She has an effect on a generation. You remember the time uh, when the king calls out Vashti? You remember that time when the king calls out Vashti and tells her, come and I show your beauty out? And then Vashti refused to come out. You remember that time? Now, there's something there that if I start to teach probably I would need two hours, but I'll teach it one day in detail. The Message Bible says, Begin from verse 10. On the seventh day of the party, the king high on the wine ordered the seven eunuchs, which were his personal assistants, Mehuman, Bizfa, Habona, Bigta, Agbata, Zeta, and Kaka. <laughs> yeah, funny. To bring him queen who? Vashti, replendent in her royal crown. He wanted to show off her beauty to the guests and officials. She was extremely hot. And the next verse says, Queen Vashti refused. Listen. Queen Vashti, and I want to show you, you people say leadership, eh? God is going to position you in high places. Eh? Queen Vashti refused the summons delivered by the eunuchs. The king lost his temper, seeing, uh, seething with anger over her insolence. And the king called his counselors, all experts, legal matters. It was the king's practice to consult his life expert advisors. And that's the right thing. Every king must have wise men around him. Next verse. And those closest to him were Kashena, Setha, Admata, Apostle Grace, Tashish, Meres, Pastor Zak, Masena, Gloria, Memukan, and the seven highest ranking princes of Persia and Media, and the inner circle with access to the king's ear. And the Bible says, he asked them what legal recourse they had against Queen Vashti for not obeying King Asaph's summons delivered by the eunuchs. Memukan spoke up in council, listen, of the king and princes, and he says, it's not only the king Queen Vashti has insulted. I think it's not only the what? The king, Queen Vashti, has what? Has insulted. It is all of us, leaders and people alike, in every last one of kings that accesses provinces. That means when she said no, she didn't say not only the king. The thing in you can defile a whole kingdom. That means the thing in you also can give life to a whole kingdom. Do you realize the power of nations? Do you know the influence of nations is in you? The king would say no, but it's not written in the scripture, have I not seen in my eyes, that a king can say no and then defile a whole nation. But a woman said no to the king and the whole nation was defiled. And the next verse says, listen to this spirit. The words going out, did you hear the latest about Queen Vashti, King Zaxas, that had her to be brought before him and she wouldn't do it. When the women hear it, they will start treating their husbands with contempt. The spirit on her was going to hit the whole kingdom. The, whole, the moment, we, give me the Amplified, verse 17. He says, hey, for this deed of the queen will become known to all women, making their husbands contemptible in their eyes, since they will say King Ahasuerus commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, but she did not come. She, would, she was going to make every man in the land contemptible and all women defiled. That movement is defiling women. Many women are defiled and they don't even know that they are defiled. They don't even know they are what? They are defiled. She just speaks on radio and says, no, women, huh? and then before you know that, you just think it's just one statement. But that defiles the whole nation. You even wasn't in it. It just eats you up. You don't know why. You just start to look at guys, even me, I need my rights. It's, it's my right, you know. And, 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 and you're getting it wrong because, again, I'm going to draw the balance here. The devil has the church where he wanted it to be. We were not called to treat women like dogs, but also women were not supposed to defy their normal order. The truth is in the middle here. But some of you are even too defiled to believe me. Some of you are too defiled to believe me. You, you, because that's what you know. You think that you must. You know? But those of these, both of these extremes are wrong. We're not supposed to treat women like dogs. But they're not also supposed to forget their part in the gospel. You're not supposed to forget your part in the gospel. That's why I say the truth is somewhere here in the what? In the middle. 
And sometimes I've gone to women's conferences in different places and I find just the feminist spirit speaking. I've heard it on pulpits. People preach and then by the end of the day you realize we're not preaching the gospel. We're not here in the middle. No. We are either trying to liberate you to become a rebellious or to become dogs. Do you understand? Many people when they minister, they don't see the, the, the what? The balance. We don't see it. We don't see it. And then you ask yourself, why are men and women are not married or why marriages are failing? It's because many people are defiled. It's inside their system. It's even how you talk. It's inside. It's so inside you. It's so inside you. It's not something you can just wake up and say, let me remove it out of my... No, 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 no. It's just so inside you. That's why some women, you realize they have stories like, he walked away and I didn't know why he left. Because a man won't just come and tell you that this is who you are. It's a spirit. It's inside you. You can't even know it's wrong. You can't even know it's wrong. That defilement there is because we, 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 the church has failed to bring truth on the table. And until the truth is brought to the table, we're not going to have marriages restored. You think men don't have issues? No, put men's conferences, I'll show you. <laughs> they also have their issues. But you see, we also have our issues, okay? And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and we also cut ourselves to in men's conferences if you come, okay? So I'm not here to make you feel like a dog, right? Or that you're not important or useful. No, in fact, the essence of the New Testament was to bring that liberation in your spirit. The Bible says in the New Testament that they are co-heirs of grace with us. You understand? They're co-heirs of grace with us. In other words, we are... That's why he, he, he tells us men that he says, you have to deal with your women in knowledge. Simply put, don't marry a dense chap. Simple. We just don't even talk about that. Don't re relate with a dense man. Because if you don't carry the knowledge of God, you're in trouble. He says, likewise, he has been deal with them according to knowledge. Giving on unto the wives as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life. That your prayers may not be hindered. Are you with me? Yeah, are you with me? So, if, if you married the funny chap that know God, that's your problem. Pray that he knows God. Don't pray that he stops. No, just pray that he knows God. Right? So, when people read the word there for weaker vessels, they assume <laughs> they are weaker spirits. There's a difference between vessel and spirit. There's a difference between vessel and spirit. The word actually there rendered for weaker vessel is their emotional being. You understand? They deal with emotion before reasoning. Before we talk about it first, minister to my heart. Then you can talk. But if my heart is not ministered to, it doesn't matter how much mathematics you have. Even if the equation is right and the answer is correct, it doesn't make sense. We understand that. Praise the Lord. So, but... Some people think weaker vessel is weak in the mind. You see, eh? the ones who regard them like dogs, they think that weaker vessel is what? Is a weak mind. Oh, women are stupid. That's a very serious statement. That's a very, very serious statement. Very serious statement. You cannot say that all women are what? You can't say, you can't say that. You can't say that. You cannot that it's unacceptable under any circumstances so there is just an the emotional bit of them so he says the knowledge in you should know how to deal with emotion first because if you don't understand that and it overrides your ego you also become more funny and at the end of the day god holds us accountable the men not the women he's always doing the same thing you know eve eats god gives quiet adam eats come god comes and tell him <laughs> you understand ananias and Sapphira, they both eat stuff the temptation was there but he comes to the chap first. Why? Because he's responsible for his own household. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Say amen. So, we don't want women to also be treated like they're nothings. No. The New Testament has said that you are heirs together of the grace of life. You're heirs of the grace of life. Otherwise, some, the other day somebody came to me, ah, women are not supposed to be preaching. I asked him, okay, if they're not supposed to be preaching, why has he made them teachers? The prophetic could have sat on men only. Don't get it wrong. It's because the balance is not there and our understanding is so carnally inclined. And so we think that because, you know, we read this and, 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 and many of you, I don't even understand what Paul meant. 
I have a sermon on that. Somewhere I think it was Russia's woman reloaded. I explained that. You look for that sermon. It will explain the woman and her ministry. Some people think that Mbu, women are not supposed to keep quiet and silent. You know? And then that means that they're not supposed to be ministers of the gospel. So then Jesus would not have anointed them. He says, in the last days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your young men and women shall what? Shall prophesy and the old men shall dream dreams. Even your main servants and women servants. All of them. He didn't give a difference. No, no, no. All of them shall be what? Shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't think the Holy Spirit sat on you, but not to be a minister. You understand what I'm saying? And I've had great teachers of the world, which are women, very great teachers. And I've learned from them. I've read books of women with experiences with God. You understand? And, 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 and you have to respect and honor it. That God has given them too. He has blessed it upon their lives. But the issue is where is that position? You understand? It's like one time I was reading the story of um, Deborah. Yeah? You remember Deborah? Uh, Judges, I think, chapter 4. You see how Judges introduces Deborah, right? And I want you to see this. Don't worry, this is for you who plan to be married. Don't suspect you might marry. <laughs> and Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapido, she judged Israel. You see? Now, she was not Deborah, the prophetess, a wife of Lapido. I, I don't know whether you get it. Huh? She was not Deborah, the prophetess, a wife of Lapidus. No. She was Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidus. I see what I'm saying. That means that Lapidus was more important than prophecy. And her judgment. You understand what I'm saying? The wife was more important to God than the prophetess. In that order. In fact, when you read the scriptures, Lapidoth was mentioned only once. He was never mentioned again. In the, never. That was the end. We just knew there was a Lapidoth, the husband. Right? But I love that the Bible did not say, Deborah, our prophetess, whose husband is Lapidoth. No. I love that it wasn't the glory on Lapidoth on her. It was the wife of her. Lapidus. I don't know whether I'm making sense. So when the Proverbs book says that she shall do good to her husband all the days of her life. You understand? When the Bible speaks of that woman who will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. And his name shall be known. He shall be known in the courts because of her. You understand? It means that a lot in the making of, of, of the man is behind what the woman is. And that's, that's a balance, by the way. Every man should understand it. He, her husband, he, the Bible didn't say he, his wife or... No, her husband. The Bible says her husband is known in the gates. I don't know that you understand the semantics there. Her husband. Bawa manidua. You see? <laughs> Did you see that? There's a reason why God says she, she, she has a glory here. He's not alone. Eh? No. Her husband is known in the gates. When he sits among the elders of the land. Her husband. Yet in this instance they are not talking about virtue on the man. No. They are talking about the woman of virtue. And they say because of the virtue in the inside of you. Your husband is known. In other words you make him known. You are the one which makes him. If you don't make him. It's up to you. You and your home fails. You don't say this guy. It's not the guy. You have to know how to make him. But what if the guy is difficult? You don't understand what I'm saying. The man can't eat your food. And be funny. He can't. He can't. Even olden cultures knew that. The women of long ago they knew. When the guy can is eating your food. You'll understand in future. Some of you, you can't understand me now. But in future, you'll what? It's her food, her raiment, and her duty. Those three things the scriptures talks about. Not only physical, but even spiritual. You know, some of you end on just physical food. That's why you don't get it. That's why you don't get it. When I talk about food, you talk, think only physical stuff. 
what you put on the table and what you give him to eat. It's, it's deeper than that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's what? It's deeper than that. But I wanted to give you a point here. That before, when, when Deborah comes into the picture, a prophetess, the wife of Lepidus, and she judged Israel. You realize that to God, before she became the prophetess, she was the wife. Right? She was the wife. Before she judged Israel, she was the wife. And there's some instinct in this woman, I want you to see it. I want you to see this. And the Bible, let's continue. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel, in and out of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came to her up for judgment. And the next verse says, And she sent and called Barak, of Abitham out of the Kedesh Allah Bakushanda Rabakusta Kedesh Naftali and said unto him <laughs> Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded thee saying go draw toward Mount Tabor and take with thee ten thousand men of children of Natali and the children of Zebulun was re reminding the king right and I will draw unto thee the river of Kishon Koma Sisera Kishon Sisera the captain of Jabin Zami with his chariots and his multitudes, and I will deliver him into thine hand. God had promised that he was going to deliver Israel's enemy into the hand of the king. Are we together? She was reminding him. Eh? And the next verse says, And Barak said unto her, If thou will go with me, then I will go. But if thou will not go with me, then I will not go. He told her, If you don't go with me, I will not go. Okay? And the next verse says, And she said, I will surely go with thee. Huh? Notwithstanding the journey that thou takest not shall be, of thine honor, for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of the woman. And Deborah arose and went with Balak. Now give me the message, Virgil, and understand the meaning. The message, says, the message says, and she said, of course I'll go with you, but understand that with an attitude like that, there will be no glory in it for you. God will use a woman's hand to take care of Sisera. Deborah got ready and went with Balak to Kadesh. If you remember the first prophecy given to him, they told him that the king, God had put Sisera into the hands of the king. That means he was the one supposed to be killing Jael with his own hand. But because the king had a funny attitude and a funny spirit of fear, huh? he, he said, if you don't go with me, I'm not going to go. That's when we see what was in this woman's heart. And we realize that she was seeking the glory of the king of Israel, even though she was a judge of Israel. She said, look, the reason why I, I have an issue going with you is that there is a certain attitude you have that is wrong. And here is the purity of that heart, this woman. She says, because I see that the hand that Israel is going to be put, the, the victory over Sisera is going to be put in the hands of a woman with that attitude. The spirit you carry is not right to carry glory. Meaning that even though I'm a judge talking to you, my main interest is that my king should take glory. I'm the one delivering the prophetic word. I'm the one judging for Israel. It's true. But the order is that my king has to take the glory. And your attitude is wrong, O king, because if you go with me, I'm not going to refuse because, again, I'm a submitted subject to you, our king. Even though I deliver the message, I don't know who I'm speaking to. Even though I deliver the message, I'm still a subject to you, my king. If you say I will go, I will go. But I have to warn you with your attitude, sir, that if I go with you, it will mean that you don't have enough faith to get this guy by your own hand. God will give glory to a woman. You understand? In other words, my intention is that it's even disturbing me that a woman should take that glory, right? Instead of our king taking that glory. Do you see the spirit now? The spirit now is saying that I have the power, I have authority, I even have the glory to judge Israel. But the right thing is that my king carries a particular position in that and we have to give him a certain position. And I'm married to Lapido. I'm his wife. I learned those things under that household. Oh, well, you understand what I'm trying to say. You see, now, if you don't understand this balance, you will either be a dog and not say, are you hearing me? Or not even regard your words at all as important as God speaking through you to save a whole nation and bring peace back to Israel. Or you become Jezebel and want to take over the show. Then you get to the battleground and say, you, go the other side, slope down. Kill 75 now, where are you? Oh yeah, slope down. And then after that, they all come chanting. Put your name. Okay, let's not put your name. <laughs> Then they carry you up. Oh, 
I'm like, you guys, I don't deserve this. Stop, put me down. No way. <laughs> but inside you like, yeah. <laughs> inside you like, what? Yeah, baby. <laughs> you understand? And if you don't understand this balance here, you see, that's what makes the woman who she is. You remember the scripture in Genesis 2.18 that it is not good for man to be alone. Do you know actually that word is translated literally from the Greek word there. Man should not be alone. The word there is he cannot follow alone. He cannot complete something alone. God gave you power to be a helper, not a controller. You understand? And not an indifferent one who says, ah, whatever he wants, let him do. Mm -hmm. He's the man of the house. That's his ministry. If he wants, let him decide. And I know some of you have been pushed to a certain place. I know some men, eh? they can hush you eh? until you get to point and say, okay, you do what you want. You see him falling in a ditch. You don't do nothing. You say, let him fall there. I don't give a damn. My kids are old. <laughs> there was a time I cared whether the chap dies or not. But because <laughs> of the house we are living in, it's not even what? Under rent. We paid for it. If he dies, he dies. Ah, there is enough stuff to sell. I remember even all these properties, I'm the, ones who, I'm the one who is keeping them. And that guy is very big-headed. And when he falls up, bah! He say, hey, hey, I told you. And then you go to your kids. And you start to tell them, <laughs> That guy died, listen. And then you come to the attitude of the guy, ask you a question, say, ah, no, you do what you want. You do what you want, and you, you whatever. You understand? Why? Because you can't cut a wire. No, you do your part. Even in the wire, tell him you're going to knock, let him knock. In the wire, you what? You tell him, brother, you're going to knock, and when you knock, I'll come and say, sorry, we shall lick those wounds together, but you're going to what? Knock, sit back, devil, and keep quiet. I didn't say, ah, now you wait, wait, now listen to me, if you don't listen to me, because hey, again, remember, eh? the balance. Are, are, we, are, we, are we together? Are we together? So at the end of the day, <laughs> he knocks, doesn't listen to me. Let me keep quiet. You understand? Again, it goes back to which man did you marry? If you made the mistake, you can pray. Eh? God can help you. <laughs> yeah, some of you made mistakes, but there is a grace for you also. But if you have not made that mistake, again, go back. Did you marry a man of knowledge? Because, Sarah, it's understandable. The chap can wake up and you tell him, get rid of Hagar. And the guy had a bad attitude. He says, no, I'm not getting rid of my kid. But there is a God you carry. If he knows that God, God will come at night and squeeze him for you very well. And the next day he will put the, dog, the donkey and the child and set them going. If he knows God, but if he doesn't know God, if he doesn't know God, what do you do? Pray for his salvation. Don't worry, he saves. The Bible says that the right, the what? The, 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 the righteous woman sanctifies her husband. No, if he not. You know, so there is a place on you that probably can win him over if you screwed up. Eh? But if you enter it that you know, hey, I know, but me, let me marry this Muslim guy. Okay, you go ahead. We shall, we shall see where that will end. Eh? By the way, it even annoys me that up to now we still yoke with unbelievers. I don't understand that mystery. Up to now, eh? Yeah. I don't know how you speak a tongue. Roko Bakaya, Zeleba. And then after that you go walking together. I, how? How do you do that? In the morning I says, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. How? How do you do that? Somebody one time told me, you know, Apostle, some men are Muslims, but they are very good. No, there is nothing like that. He's going to be good one day, but after another day, because you you're dealing with a spiritual thing, you're not dealing with a good man, you're dealing with a spiritual thing. You can never be so as good than the spirit at work within you. One day it just wakes up, and the chap sees a kami do. <laughs> and the next thing you know, <laughs> pray, 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 Apostle. <laughs> You know, if you made the mistake then, I say there is grace for your restoration. But if you haven't made it, I want to tell you, listen from the women who made it. They all tell you, don't go there. And somebody can hear this, and again tomorrow, bring it. That's why I can't lie to you that I can attend that wedding in Buhamanda Grace. No, I don't come. Ah, uh, that's abuse. Why are you a grace preacher? So what? I watch darkness and light mixing unrighteousness and man, do you realize that eh, this is so serious praise the lord jesus christ me i'm talking to someone even if you look at me with his eyes of even see that the thing is victory but gospel is profitable
You are already unequal. You are telling us you are equal. Then you submit yourself to what is unequal. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Those things should not be heard of. At least not in our group here. Hey, there are those ones who haven't yet seen God. Their hope is in some guy. You know, they are not yet delivered. The guy thinks there's a lady one time coming now, nah, Apostle. If this guy is mine, if I said no now, nah, who will marry me? I'm old. I told a woman, you already married to Christ. Oh, fuck. You mean Christ has not yet contented your spirit? You mean he has not yet filled that part enough for you to think that a certain guy has to come and make you go, oh, 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 no. It was culture that made you that way, that made you think that you're not complete. You, you enter marriage to be what? Complete. And that's why I tell people, huh? I just started sharing some people and I told them that, look, there's one thing that every human spirit has. It's called soul craving. This soul craves, huh? And if this soul is not satisfied with anything spiritual, it will start to look for cravings outside. That's why people over smoke and drink and do all kinds of things with their bodies just to satisfy what's inside. Until you get to a point where everything you've done just can't make sense, and the Bible calls it vanity and vexation of spirit. Until you realize that the place where you're delivered most is when God himself satisfies your soul. That whether in this world you ever get married or you don't, it does not matter. Hey, let me also talk about that. Some of you think that every woman's destiny is marriage. No. There are people who can go to their grave very happy because he ministered to them a pleasure that no man could ever give them. It is possible. We are talking about Jehovah God. We're talking about Jehovah God. And when that soul is bleeding, it's not right for it to enter into marriage. Because it will enter with expectations instead of <laughs> due responsibility. Instead of you planning your part, you're always going to look at how the other part is played. Are you together? And that soul, if it is not fed and completed by God, there are many people doing many things in this world because their souls are incomplete. They are very confused souls. These people who fight each other, what? Enemy. <laughs> you look at people who backbite each other and then they gossip and then they say evil about each other. When you go back to this person's life, you realize inside their soul, there is something in them that has not been content. When you're content by God, you don't look for outside approvals. You don't seek to make, destroy one person for you to feel better. You don't because it has nothing to do with anything outside. It is inside you. It is inside you. God deliver somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm going to do this to this man. How could he do this to me? And then you start revenging. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this to this woman. How could she do this to me? How, uh, uh. You see, all of that is just shows how sick your soul is. Until you get to a point where God himself ministers to you and makes you content. That it's nothing to do with what he does to you or what he doesn't but I do to you. If he takes you out, that's okay. If he doesn't, it's still okay, woman. Settle it in your heart. If he says if about you, that's okay. If he says good, mm -hmm. whether he says it or he doesn't, you have to get to a point where you look at yourself in the mirror and see that withered face still beautiful because God has ministered contentment in your spirit and nobody can take it away from you. That's a complete woman. When you enter marriage, you don't enter marriage to be beautiful. You enter marriage to do what God calls you to do because you don't have time wasting it making your face purple and making your lips pink for you to become beautiful then you compare yourself and then you start to say okay she has a bigger butt oh god what's wrong with me listen god god hey my rabba koshalama contentment means that you look at your butt and it's okay that's what contentment is Contentment is that you look at your skin and it is too dark. And then you see it shining in the light of the Lord. That's what they call contentment. You're fat but you're beautiful. You love your weight and that's okay. It's not supposed to make you feel funny. No, because your, your weight is so big. Okay, you become big as big as you want. God did not create fat women. He created wives. And you're living all your life. Trying to satisfy a person who will never understand you. If you become fat, you're so fat. If you become small, you're too small. If you put on high heels, you're too tall. If you put on flat shoes, you're too short. If you put on this high thing, and then he says, oh, he doesn't love me. Then they see you in gyms trying to, to, to lose weight. No, you're pleasing your man. Come on. 
be delivered. Another day he starts dating you, tell him, boss, I can be big, I can be small, I can be dark, I can be brown. You're not marrying this thing outside. You're marrying that incorruptible, that gentle and meek spirit, which in the eyes of God is priceless. I want to make you holy babies. Raise the president out of me. If you're serious, that's what we're interested in. But if you're still looking at my hair and how short it is and how big my ears are, you're not the thing. We have bigger things to do. Nations are in trouble. We want to serve nations. You're still looking at my nose and it's still a problem. You don't have knowledge, brother. You don't. I'm beating myself. Man. Somebody tell your old neighbor I'm a woman of purpose. I have greatness inside me. I don't need to be approved by anybody outside. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm here to change a nation. Mugambe! My grandchildren are waiting on me. I have no time to be approved by anything outside. My soul is content with God. I knew Jesus before I met him. Mugambe! Praise the Lord Jesus. And that's because of this no balance. That's why men are even married for the wrong purpose. This balance thing here. Even women are married for the wrong purpose. So even marriage has to be redefined. Hello? Marriage also what? Has to be redefined. We're looking at the wrong thing. We're looking at the wrong thing. That is why I tell you whether you're married or not, first heal in your soul and be content. Yeah. That nothing outside can be told you that makes you different. Amen. If he has knowledge, if he has knowledge, if he has knowledge, and that's why you realize, I wish more men were here. If he has knowledge, you realize that's his ministry, to make you beautiful. Look at the ministry of Christ and the church. In all our weaknesses, he says, I impute righteousness. You see, I impute righteousness. If he thinks you're ugly, the problem is not you. The problem is him. Yes, because look at how Christ is dealing with the church. He says, so the man leaves his own household, comes joined with his wife, and the two become one. And the Bible says, and that Christ spoke concerning the church. That's how the church is. He doesn't come to the church and tell it, you're so fat, you're so evil, you're ugly, your teeth are longer. No, he comes and tells it, he's beautiful bride. That's what he calls it. He imparts righteousness on it every other day. Jesus is there to love you. And he says, husband, love your wife, even as Christ has loved the church. And did what? Gave his life for it. So his, his, his big ministry is simply to tell you you're beautiful. Every morning you're beautiful. Even you married men who are here who are going to get married. Learn to learn to lie to your wives a bit. Honey, am I fat? No, you're still cute. You're hot the way you are. If you, if you want to talk to her to lose weight, you deal with high knowledge. Present it in what? In knowledge. Tell her soon I want to carry you. She will understand. But if you have to carry me, I have to be a bit what? Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 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 The reason why we put these conferences is to give you purpose. Not to make you the dogs they sweep over, but also not to make you Jezebel things controlling men. No, that you get into this center here and be a woman of purpose. And the Bible says her husband is known. Her husband is known. Her husband is known. That means that the total sum of your husband is your ministry. Let me tell you, as I know many men of God whose ministries have failed because of women. Nothing else. The guy wasn't a problem. No, you might think he was, but he wasn't. Me, I gave you your mother, Sarah. He says, and you are all children of Sarah. You all are children. Your mother had a situation with her father, your father, Abraham. But she didn't wake up to get a fist and tell him, Abraham, eh? you go right. I'm going to take you to Fida. Uh, you look at all those Fida women. Many of, I'm sorry if you work here. 
I'm sorry if you work here. But some of them are not seeking the balance. No, they are seeking to liberate you from marriage. Many, not all, many. Even them, they are not married. They are very angry women with very bruised souls. How can he do that to you? Kari, we are going to fight. Let's go. Then they get their papers. They don't even know what you shared. They were not even there when you are dating. Come, darling, let's go. Then you also go. The lawyer doesn't know your attitude. She doesn't know sometimes that you also can become a bit messy and irritating. She doesn't know that you're also a work in progress. And then they take you to the court. And after the guy is there and then you've sued him very well. Then you start to say, oh, well, we can't answer. I feel inside me something is not right. <laughs> Why? Because now the anger subsides. Right? The anger what? It went down. Then you came back to reasoning. And then you said, Yeah, I saw women back in those days when I was still working uh, somewhere. I will not tell you. She gets the guy in prison. She has a son. Hey, you arrest this chap. Then they arrest him very well. Yeah. Then after a few days, she's the one who goes back to her. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. I'm almost finishing. I've never spoken. <laughs> Are we together? So, for me, what I'm seeking for is that the Lord grant you, according to His grace, the knowledge of that balance. That you're not the dog in that house, but you're not just a believer. You're not just a believer. You're not just a believer. Because that's when you understand the true victory of what it means to be a woman. Let me tell you, women are not celebrated, and, and I'm sorry, I'm going to say a very radical statement, but I'll qualify it. Women are not celebrated because men would not live without them. The Bible says the man was alone. The Bible doesn't say he was lonely. There are two different things. But women are celebrated because God knows very well that there are things about them on their ministry on the earth that could not be complete without the woman. We are talking about ministry. And that's when marriage becomes ministry. You don't enter marriage because you saw a nice chap with hot and your body was burning. Then you enter marriage. No. The essence of God, you just remember, when he joins them together, he makes them procreators with him. I mean, so the man or the woman is entering marriage. The primary thing that enters your life is I'm entering marriage to be a minister. Not just to be a woman, satisfying him. Otherwise, he could go on the street and get it. But there is something about you that is different from the woman on the street. No. There are probably even women who have better things. But what makes you the wife is because God knew you are the helper suitable. Helper suitable is not washing clothes only. No, washing machines can do that. Helper suitable is not just having sex. No, another woman can give it. Helper suitable is when he sees it and says, this one, the moment this one gets joined to this one, ministry is complete. Her husband, the Bible says, her husband is what? Known in the courts. He's known. He's known. And like Deborah, she didn't take glory and said, Gwen no gwe, she could see the wounds. Kumanga singata bad dens a brother. Over debt over you. You get an angle and pull a talk to me nicely, Tata Amos. Talk to me nicely. Singate Yarinze. Singa and, and men are like that by the way. They work together with their poor wives, never to lambu do kabu wobu do can you bubany gabunji we but and then the thing becomes big. Then the chap looks for another woman. Men are like that sometimes. I don't know what's wrong, but those are men who are not in our ministry. <laughs> I was. You understand? And that is why you realize that when that man touches his heifer, his finances go down. And when he starts to pray, God die and heal. Remember, because you're dealing with them as co-heirs of the grace of this life that your prayers might be heard. He says, God, ma, ba, 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 ba. And that is why when a man is going to marry, you make sure you don't marry something that can hinder your prayer. <laughs> That's why it tells us to deal with them according to what? 
to knowledge. You don't marry something that can, you understand? Because me, back in the days, I used to live somewhere in, in, in uh, Mwonga. And there was this couple. Men used to beat each other. And for them, it was culture. I remember one time there was this lady I went with in school. She was called Joyce. And I remember I was at church. I think for me, it was sort of something like that. It's told me, for us in our culture, if a man doesn't beat you, he don't love you. I said, what? He doesn't love you. So I said, okay, now, me, I'm this humble chap who's going to come back home and I have a bad day. What are you going to do? You, you just time the day when the when it is very bad, he enters the house, you slap him in the face. Katia, we are in a mystery of your marriage. We are not being in a mystery of your marriage. Do you understand? You see them fighting and you think that they are fighting. Kumba, they are exchanging endearments. <laughs> Darling, sweetie, I love you, I miss you. But, have you seen cultural dances of Karamojo? They are rolling the guy down, they are kicking him. For them, they are in their culture. They, those are endearments, you understand? For, for you to think, endearments is sweetheart, baby. No, for them, they could be pizza. Wow, you understand? And then marriage continues, and you don't hear divorce rates in Karamojo. You hear them in the darling sweet honey pie, what? Biscuits, chocolates, they are like eat now. They are no longer people. She addressed her husband as my Lord. Praise the Lord. My what? My Lord. Hallelujah. I have overspoken. I want to pray with you. No, it's even the rain. Come on. <laughs> I'm supposed to be going somewhere. Can you raise your hands up? Speak in other tongues. Like Deborah saved Israel, you're going to save this nation. There is hope in you. I feel the right seed has been planted. The days of treating women like dogs are over. But the days of also women who are too feministically radical is also over. God is calling the church to the balance of being Deborah, a prophetess, the wife and the judge. She's the wife. And let that mystery be the same that becometh the church. For he says the man shall be joined together with his wife and the two shall become one. And the Bible says, and this Christ spoke concerning the church. In the name of Jesus, we come against every secular teaching on marriage and relationships and family and women and men. We refuse it out of our systems. We refuse it out of our thought processes. We refuse it out of our children. Women are not cheap. They are not supposed to be sold like goats in markets. They are not supposed to be raped and abused spiritually without consent. They are supposed to be walked down the aisle in the name of Jesus Christ. We refuse that our women be called dogs and animals. But we also refuse that our women become too radically feminist and very insolent and disrespectful to their heads. That is not what become a women of faith and it's not what, what's going to become of our nation. God is going to raise the right women in the name of Jesus. Even if God did not call you to be a married person, if you're going to be called to be single in this world, it is still okay. But even in that singleness, may the Lord bring out the true beauty of what it means to be a woman. The mother to nations in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that no woman under the sound of my voice shall fail. You will not fail in your personal career. You will not fail in your personal ministry. You will not fail if God has called you to marry. You will not fail with your children. You will raise sons and daughters. They shall be for signs and wonders. They will be potents in this land. The Bible says, and your children shall be called blessed. In every nation they shall be known. You will be at the end to the true representation of one which raises the right thing, the right seed, the right people, the right places. I decree upon your life that your shining, that your beauty is not based on ice cream and putting and eating right. Your beauty is not based on the makeup. It's okay to make up, but there's something inside you. The Bible calls it the bad incorruptible, that gentle and mixed spirit within the eyes of God is priceless. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that by the seed that God has blessed in the inside of you, that you'll come out and shine. That you'll come and shine in this nation, that you'll shine in your family, that you'll shine in your land. I speak healing to all souls that have been bruised and wounded and been made to feel that they are nothing in this world, that they are ugly, that they are shirtless, that they are too fat to be anything. I want to decree upon your life that you are the beauty of perfection in Zion. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are great the way you are. And your own cannot say those words. God has created this church to complete and impart righteousness on you. I decree and I declare that the original mind behind this Christ himself, tonight he cleanses you. Tonight he delivers your soul. Tonight he delivers your spirit. That you should not seek to be right before people, but that you should seek to be right to God. That even when you enter marriage, or if you're married, or if you never marry, that's not the point. The point is that you'll be complete 
in him which is the head of all principality and that you fulfill the purpose that he sent you in this world to fulfill i pray for deliverance for those who are hurting in their marriage i pray for healing for those who are wounded so deeply because they related with the wrong kind and the indifferent one i pray that only god can minister to you the bible tells us that he is god who mends broken hearts God has, knows how to minister to those who are broken. I pray that may God minister to you. I pray that may He in a special way heal your heart and make you to believe again and not make you indifferent and feel like a dog or become Jezebel, but that you still stay at the center of truth and God's divine purpose in your life. If you should move on, that's okay. If you don't move on, still I want to decree upon your life that God will sort in some way. Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above what which you hope or even dare to expect according to the working power that working in you. Let him start to work in your lives today. Let him start to work in your lives today. Let him start to minister to your hearts today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen.